Just a few thoughts though before we do that. If you haven't noticed, <laughs> um, there's a lot of political stuff going on lately, yes? Um, so that's probably an understatement. Um, you know, and, and really, how can you miss it? Every channel you turn to on the news, um, we see the latest that's going on in whatever level of government it is, and the, uh, the arguments and stuff between the various political parties. Uh, and then in between that, you have, they're starting to come out now, all the uh, commercials on why you should support so-and-so, um, and uh, why they have earned your vote, and what they're going to give you in return. Um, and, uh, and then you also have the political polls as well. Um, I, somewhere, I forget where it was, I saw these recently. Uh, I don't recall what it was on, but um, uh, some organization takes it and um, I've always wondered whether or not it's an actual uh, real depiction of what stuff is um, or whether there's some bias going on there. But anyway, um, they often center around how someone, uh, how likely someone is to vote for someone else or how happy, of course, you are uh, with a certain political leader, leader's job currently. I was curious this week, in, in light of that, about what the poll results would be if we took a poll about how people thought God was doing with the universe right now. Um, don't strike me or anything here. Um, what would the results say? Uh, would people be favorably disposed or disapproving? Um, you know, in my opinion, the results, I think, would likely be different at this time of the year in comparison to others because of the fact that Thanksgiving is around right around the corner. Um, and that tends to um, make people more thankful uh, and I think open their eyes to the blessings of God a bit more. Um, the holiday seems to, uh, to draw that out in people as if it's expected that we must be thankful for something and not to do so is to go against societal norms and the tradition that we've had for so many years. My question is this though, what about the rest of the year? What about the rest of the year? We focus on thanking God now, but what about the rest of the year? Do we still express thanks then? And to whom? And those two aspects are important to consider because, you know, as I've seen TV shows and movies over the year, uh, which, of course, by the way, do impact our society, whether people believe it or not, um, we see people expressing thanks to one another. We see things, uh, just simple statements of thanks, th I'm thankful for this, but God is often missing from the equation. Um, and I think gratitude itself has decreased generally as a society has become further and further infatuated with itself uh, instead of God. And is that surprising? No, not, not really. Um, Paul tells us in Romans 1, he says that those who refuse to honor God and give him thanks are those that have chosen to reject him uh, for creation. And, those, and they are those whose hearts have been darkened. Well, Paul says in 2 Timothy 3 that ingratitude is one of the characteristics of what people will be like uh, in the last days. Um, Brittany was, uh, she was, had watched Dawson and Allen for quite a while and was praying with them one day. Um, I don't recall how long ago this was, but um, at one of the meals she was thanking God for the daily bread, and she, they misunderstood her and, and thought she said blueberry bread. Um, and so now every time they pray, they thank God for blueberry bread. Um, yeah. And it's cute, of course, uh, but, you know, it, it's, it goes into this, as Michelle and I have been raising our children, but trying to teach the importance of saying thank you expressing gratitude, whether that is uh, for something they've received as a present for their birthday or even just a simple glass of water at a meal. You ask somebody to get it, they gave it to you, all right, say your thank you. Um, or say thank you. Uh, why do we do this? Well, part of it is of what? Being polite, yes. That's the cultural you know, thing to do. But the Bible also expresses the importance of having a thankful heart. I did a, a quick word search this week uh, in some form of the word thanks appears 200 times in the Old and New Testament between those two. Um, 
And the most common form is the word thanks, and it's often coupled with some form of the word give. Give thanks, gave thanks, giving thanks, something of that nature. And the two words are often joined together, and they speak of an action either that has already taken place, or it is a summons to action, usually with God as the recipient of that thanksgiving. Um, why should it be directed to him, though? Why? Um, well, a few reasons this morning. Three, in fact. I don't have a note sheet for you. If you have a pad of paper, you can write these down, though. And I'll be sure to highlight them for you. Um, and really, they, they focus on what we're doing this morning as well. Three important reasons to remember. First one is this. He deserves it. God deserves our thanks. The fact that the Bible uses the phrase, give thanks, over and over again, suggests that there are reasons to thank God. There are reasons that we are to express this toward Him. The first of those is His character. God deserves our thanks because of His character. Uh, and we give thanks to God for who He is, not, and not just the top five qualities on the list that we think of all the time, right? Love, grace, mercy, um, two more, add two more, kindness, goodness, there we go. More than that, all right? We thank God for who He is in His entire person and really that each quality balances with the other and that He does not change. And that gives us assurance in life, doesn't it? Even in the harshest of circumstances, God is what? Still good? Most difficult circumstances, God is still good. He still loves us. And each day we can expect to find His grace. Lamentations 3, 22 through 24 talks about that. James says in chapter 1, Verse 17 of his epistle, he says, All generous giving and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or the slightest hint of change. God deserves our thanks because of his character, also because of his works. Um, if you read the Psalms, it doesn't take very long to see the psalmists time and time again express thanks to God for what he has done. Uh, they invite those around them to declare the mighty deeds of the Lord with them. And time and time again, they say, certainly his deeds are awesome. Certainly they are wonderful. Sometimes, though, what our eyes are not always open to what's going on, which can be a prayer for us. That, Lord, open my eyes to all you are doing, that I might give you the thanks that you do indeed deserve. Um, so first thing he deserves, the second thing he has commanded us to, that sounds odd, God has commanded us to give thanks. We need to understand a couple of things. First thing is this, that withholding thanks does not manipulate God. God has commanded us to do it, withholding it does not manipulate him. Um... Uh, Withholding thanks from God to bend His will rather only reveals our own lack of knowledge about who He is, uh, as well as my own sinful heart responding in evil so that my self-centeredness might be satisfied. And the second thing is this. Um, we were talking about this actually in Sunday school last week. It, it seems the fact that God has commanded it, isn't that a bit forced and coerced? Give thanks, he commands it. Isn't that forced and coerced? Um, we were talking about it in Sunday school last week, and, and uh, you know, and about how appropriate it is the fact that God gives us commands such as these. Because quite frankly, would people who are prone who are prone to worship themselves give thanks to God? Probably not, right? Instead, we what? We end up growing more and more bitter when God doesn't do what we want Him to do. And we likely then end up becoming part of the group of Romans 1 that at some point rejects God altogether. He's commanded us, though. That is our right response toward Him. Whether it's in the midst of abundant blessing or in difficulty and suffering, giving thanks to God keeps our hearts in right relationship with Him. It saves us from really the most harmful of emotions and attitudes that rob us what, of the peace that God wants us to experience. Which brings us to our last reason this morning about giving thanks. First, he deserves it. Second, he has commanded it. Third, it is useful to us. Purposing to give God thanks keeps our eyes focused on what he's doing in the world and in our lives, even in situations 
when finding anything to be thankful for seems bleak at best. Giving thanks changes our hearts, it changes our minds, it gives us perspective into the great grace of God that we experience every moment of every day. How is it useful for to us? Well, first, Thanksgiving reminds us that all we have is a gift from God. Nothing more than a verse. We already said this verse, but nothing more than a verse for this is needed. All generous giving and every perfect gift is from above. Coming down from whom? The Father. From the Father. Thanksgiving also reminds us of how much we do have from God. Close to, I was telling Michelle, it sounded a bit weird as I was typing this up this week. Um, I was writing close to 20 years, and I'm thinking, has it really been that long? I, I don't feel I can use that time scale yet in my life, but yes, 20 years. Uh, I was reading an excerpt from a book um, by Max Lucado called In the Grip of Grace. Um, and this little paragraph still resonates with me today as, as we think about how much we do have from God. He wrote this, he says, If God did nothing more than save us from hell, could anyone complain? If God saved our souls and then left us to spend our lives leprosy struck on a deserted island, would he be unjust? Having been given eternal life, dare we grumble at an aching body? Having been given heavenly riches, dare we bemoan earthly poverty? Let me be quick to add this. God has not left you with just salvation, though, has he? He writes, if you have eyes to read these words, hands to hold this book, the means to own this volume, he's already given you grace on grace. And the vast majority, is, the majority of us have been saved and then blessed abundantly more. The end of that. But we often tend to focus what on what we don't have, don't we? Giving thanks changes our focus and helps to cure this nearsightedness in our life and really give us perspective. Not only that, that, but when we focus on what we do have, I think, quite frankly, we also tend to be happier. We focus on what we do have from the Lord. So why, why do we do this service every year? Well, part of it, it's an act of obedience, isn't it? To give thanks to the Lord. It gives us a chance publicly to give thanks to God before the congregation. Uh, we do it because indeed God does deserve these phrases, these statements of thanksgiving. And doing such is part, I think, of our enjoyment of Him. Recognizing what He has done in our lives and expressing those things. And it's also useful, useful for us in reminding us of the number and the source of our blessings. And we do this not just as individuals, but corporately, because through public testimony we are encouraged in our walk with God, and it helps to fuel our faith and endurance in that walk. Paul says this in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. He says, We always rejoice, constantly pray, and everything give thanks. What does he conclude? For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. So we're going to take an offering here in just a moment. Um, and as the offertory is played, I'd like you to think this morning about some things that you might share. How might you express thanks to God um, as our Creator, as our Savior, as our Lord? How might you express thanks so that those present this morning might be edified, might be equipped in their own walk, um, strengthening and encouraging their faith? How might you testify to His marvelous deeds and wonderful works? As the music plays, think on that. Um, Let's pray. Let's give thanks uh, for just a moment before we take the offering. And then as that is taken, let's, uh, let's think on these things and then we'll have a moment to share, all right? Let's pray. Father, you have given us much. Um, I think much is not even, I think, a satisfactory word. Abundance, perhaps. Um, so much, so many other words that would better describe that. Father, help us to recognize that in our lives each and every day. Um, even to the smallest, minutest detail that is a gift from you. That we might express praise and thanksgiving to you for those things. 
we take our offering now, Father, we recognize that all that we have is a gift from you, and that these things, I say this often, is um, as we give back, Father, we're just being good stewards of what you have already given us. <coughs> Father, use these gifts to further your gospel. May the hope of Christ be spread as the people come to faith in you. We thank you. Help us each day in our own attitudes to express and be thankful for everything we have in life. The men can come forward for the offering, we'll take that, and then we will share in just a few.